Shalom everybody. Today guys, I want to show you how science proves that Jesus Christ, Yeshua, is the Son of God. And this proves the doctrine of Islam. The Quran and the Bible both declare the virgin birth of Jesus. Where there was an angel that came to Mary, in our Bible is the angel Gabriel, and told her that she will have a son and it will be an immaculate conception that will take place and she will be a virgin and she will give birth to Jesus Christ. We know that Muslims declare and the Quran declares that Jesus is not the Son of God and Muslims believe this to their very core. Now the Quran says that there was a virgin birth. I'll give you the verses right here. Okay. It's Sur 3, verses 45 through 47. It says here, Behold, the angels said, O Mary, Allah giveth thee glad tidings of a word from him. His name will be Christ Jesus, the Son of Mary, held in honor in this world and the hereafter and of the company of those nearest to Allah. He shall speak to the people in childhood and in maturity, and he shall be of the company of the righteous. She said, O oh my Lord, how shall I have a son when no man hath touched me? He said, Even so, Allah createth what he willeth. When he hath decreed a plan, he but saith to it, Be, and it is. So here we are, the Quran saying that the virgin birth took place. It's very important to understand this that the Muslims do not deny that the virgin birth took place, just like the Bible said the virgin birth took place. So that's the one thing we're all in agreement that Mary was a virgin. It was a immaculate conception in which she gave birth to Jesus Christ, Yeshua, Hamashiach. Now let's move on from here. I want to show you now how science proves that he is the son of God. If you're Muslim, you're watching this, you might want to take a look at this. Now in this video, you see the reproduction of a human being. And we all know human anatomy 101 that it takes two to tango and to create life. A male seed and a female seed. Okay, you follow me so far? The male seed carry something that the female seed does not. What's the one thing that the male seed carries that the female seed never carried, never has carried, and never will carry? It is the blood that will be put in to this child. Sperm carries the father's blood. That is human anatomy 101. We all have the blood from our fathers. Even during a nine month gestation period, the blood of the mother never, ever mixes with the baby. Yes, the mother sends the baby food and nutrients through her stomach, but her blood never, ever mixes with the baby because it's the blood that comes from the father. Now, look at this. You see that? This is a chicken egg. Just to prove my point. All right? This is an egg. And what I'm doing here, this is an illustration of a seed of a woman, a completely developed seed of a woman. All right, I know it's a chicken egg, but the same concept in a woman. Completely developed. Okay. Do you see any blood in this egg? No. There's never any blood in this egg. This is what the woman seed gives to the embryo to the baby okay now if this seed in its early development was united with the seed of a male chicken rooster okay what would you have you would have this a baby chick does not develop in the womb of the female chicken without the male donor if there is no blood introduced to this egg then there will be no life 
So if Jesus does not have a biological father here on the earth because he was born of a virgin, and the seed that impregnated Mary to bring forth Jesus came from God, what does that make God? That makes God the father of Jesus Christ. And if God is the father of Jesus Christ, what does that make Jesus? That's right. The Son of God. The spirit of Antichrist is a spirit that attacks who Jesus really is. Because there's entire religions in the world today that says that God does not have a son. Islam is one of those. And they say God does not have a son. Allah is not begotten, neither does he begot. Therefore, Jesus is a prophet. He's one of the 27 great prophets that lived on the planet. But he's not the son of God. Now, I got into a debate one time with a Muslim and I said, this presents a problem because the Quran says that Jesus was born of a virgin that's right which means he had no earthly father hmm that's right which means if he had no earthly father where did his blood come from and they looked at me and here's their expression in English oh my god because you see if he was born of a virgin and he had no earthly father, his father was God, and guess what that makes him? Son of God. So, just using a little bit of logic there, and then the demons said he was the son of God, and the people he healed said he was the son of God, and Peter declared him to be the son of God, and the angel Gabriel declared him to be the son of God, and it was God himself that said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Well said, Brother Perry. Now, Regardless of how that seed got there, there had to be a seed that was placed in this egg so that her human, natural way of a baby creating itself in the mother's womb can now take place. The natural process can begin. A seed had to be put in this egg. A male seed. Now, this part's going to confirm it probably more than anything. What you're looking at right here is the audio, which is the pictographic language, Elohim's God's original language. This language was established before man was established. Okay? And um, this language right here, if you take a look at it, it looks like hieroglyphics. Okay? But I want to point out one of the pictographs to you this one right here is called noon notice what it looks like that's right it looks like a male seed the seed that's needed to enter the seed of a woman to bring forth life okay and this symbol here means seed Yeshua is a good seed life perpetuation unstoppable motion offspring or heir all right what's amazing is that this is the symbol of seed that was established before man because the odiote has been discovered among very 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 ancient old archaeological finds and now through microscopes we have discovered that the male seed looks exactly like this is that by coincidence? No. It's by design. It's the reason why a male seed looks like that. What a powerful confirmation, once again, that Yeshua is the Son of God in heaven. So if the seed came from God, the blood came from the Father in heaven, was placed into the egg that was inside Mary, and that egg turned into a human being, naturally, like it's supposed to, but that child was Jesus Christ. His blood that came from his father in heaven was different than the blood of regular human beings, okay? He had the blood of his father. All right? Not the blood of Mary. He had the blood of his father. Like I said, science already shows it, guys. Blood comes from the seed of the father. It is not given through the egg of a woman, the seed of a woman. And the blood does not come or mix 
from the mother during the nine month gestation period. That's human anatomy 101, guys. We all know that. So when the Quran says he can't be the son of God, then whose seed was it that united with the seed of Mary? It was his seed, and it was an immaculate conception how it got placed inside that egg. And guys, Yeshua. There's a reason why Gabriel told Mary the name of Yeshua. Why? Because the name of Yeshua means God will save. Or God is salvation. The fact that he's named Yeshua alone has to raise some flags. If his name means that, and he has the blood of his father in him, and he dies for our sins, there's too many parallels that point to the gospel of Jesus Christ being the real deal. Being the one only true way to get to heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And what he's saying is, no one comes to the Father, gets redeemed, gets to stand before the Father in heaven, in the Shamayim, in the heavens, but through his blood. No one gets redeemed except through his blood. So with that being said, Jesus is the Son of God, the Son of Yahweh in heaven. And with that in mind, I want you to think about the entire gospel of Jesus Christ and why he died on the cross for our sins. Because there is no other blood on earth that was clean enough and pure enough to atone for our sins in the eyes of Yahweh other than his son, Jesus Christ. All right? At Passover, they were slaying lambs. To cover their sins. Who is Jesus Christ? The Bible says he's the Lamb of God. Who's come to take away the sins of the world. For God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. His only son by human birth. Who would take away the sins of the world. This is why his blood had to be shed guys. This is why he died on the cross. It was his blood. The new blood covenant. That Yahuwah. God in heaven made with mankind to redeem mankind through his son Jesus Christ I'll give you a few Bible verses now that backs up what I say Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace once again how important is that blood that was in Jesus Christ Hebrews 10 Verse 3 and 4, but in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. See, it was the blood of Jesus Christ that was needed to take away sins forever. Since the time of Adam to his death, burial, resurrection, and forever for all of us to be redeemed to our Father in heaven. How important is the blood of Jesus Christ? And why is Satan trying to deny it? Why is he trying to hide it? Romans 3.25 Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. How important is the blood? Unless you're covered in his blood, unless you're part of the new blood covenant that our Father in heaven, that God made with mankind through the death, burial, and resurrection of his Son, Jesus Christ, dying on a cross, his blood was good enough before God in heaven to wipe away all sins of mankind. Romans 5.19 For as by one man's disobedience, who was Adam, who fell, that many were made sinners. So by the one man's obedience, that many will be made righteous. And that's amazing. It says many will be made righteous. Not all are made righteous. Many. Why? Because you have a choice whether or not you want to accept this blood covenant and believe that Yeshua Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sin. He shed his blood for your sins as an atonement for your sins. But whoever believes in him shall be saved and have everlasting life as it says in John 
3.15. And you repent for your sins. And you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord, as your Savior. And make him the center of your life. Well, the Bible says that God loves those who love his Son. And if you don't believe in him, Jesus said in the Bible that those who do not believe in the Son of God are condemned already. You're condemned because you need a blood covenant to redeem your spirit. It's not about your works. Your works aren't going to cut it. You need a blood covenant. A blood covenant with the Father. And he gave us a blood covenant. And it's his own blood. Jesus, who is three and one with his Father. Jesus is God in the flesh that came on the earth he had pure blood he atoned for our sins he shed his blood and now we can go to heaven you can have a renewed spirit and begin seeking our father in heaven pitch your tent with Elohim and begin receiving the filling of the Ruach HaKodesh the Holy Spirit and you're on your way so I hope this was a help to you guys sorry it was kind of long please comment let me know what you guys think. Hang in there. We're almost finished. Shalom.